A new crypto quant report suggests a trillion dollars will get added to the crypto market cap after the Bitcoin spot ETF approvals. Fidelity updates their spot ETF application. Reddit rugs the moon cryptocurrency that they launched. And GBTC is closing the discount gap. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Crypto Daily. Um, so we had some fun over the weekend uh, with the fake Cointelegraph uh, news report that sent Bitcoin basically to like 30500 uh, and then within an hour, you know, obviously it came back down. So I remember I woke up to the news. Uh, I just looked at my phone and I saw um, that the price of Bitcoin went over 30K. And I was like, what the hell happened? Open Twitter. And of course, I saw all the reports of the BlackRock ETF getting approved. Um, and, you know, I saw like Cointelegraph posted. It, I saw Pomp posted it. A bunch of crypto influencers started posting it. So it became this whole thing. Uh, and then, you know, literally by the time I, you know, got out of bed, went down to my computer to check it out, uh, it came out that it was all fake news. So uh, Bitcoin immediately went right back down to uh, to pretty much where it's at now, like high 28,000 uh, to mid. And then, you know, now we're, we're dropping a little bit this morning. So I, I think we'll probably test 28K, but let's see. Um, so, you know, obviously, and I wrote, you know, a, a blog post about this over the weekend too, but um, you know, I think it was kind of like a fire drill for everybody. Like if the ETF approval happens, we kind of got a little, little sense of what's going to happen to the market. So obviously it was a very short lived, uh, event, but you can imagine if you kind of extrapolate it and say, okay, well, if this is what happens when it's just a news report for like 20 minutes, what's going to happen when it's actually real and you, you know, people have time to process it, you know, the Asian markets were, were asleep. So you know, what happens when when all the markets are awake and, and the news is out for a long time. So uh, that's pretty much going to be the topic of today's episode. Uh, CryptoQuant put out this research report titled The Next Wave of Bitcoin Institutional Adoption, How the Launch of Spot ETFs Could Increase the Market Cap by $1 Trillion. Um, so there's a few few highlights from this report, which I'll, I'll cover right now. So Bitcoin will become a $900 billion asset and the total crypto market cap will grow by $1 trillion should the Bitcoin spot ETFs be approved um, by and, and the kind of the hard deadline is March 2024. So it's saying by March 2024 at the latest. Uh, CryptoQuant says that if the issuers that have applied to list Bitcoin ETFs put 1% of their assets under management to these ETFs, approximately $155 billion could enter the Bitcoin uh, market. Obviously, this represents almost a third of Bitcoin's current market cap. Bitcoin's at like 550 billion uh, market cap right now. Historically, during previous bull markets, Bitcoin's market cap has grown three to five times more than its realized cap. Uh, this suggests that for one dollar, for every one dollar of fresh money entering the Bitcoin market, the market cap could increase three to five dollars. So uh, that's kind of where their you know projections are coming from. They're assuming that you know one percent of the assets under management by all the you know by the aggregated. Uh, people who are who are launching these ETFs, which is like obviously Fidelity, BlackRock and others, um, you know, they come up with that one hundred fifty five billion dollar number of fresh capital coming in. Uh, and then they use, you know, uh, previous metrics from previous bull runs to say that uh, for every dollar that comes in, the market cap will increase three to five. So that's how they came up with a trillion dollars uh, in total market cap getting added to crypto. And like I said, the total crypto market cap right now is just over 1 trillion. It's 1.08 trillion. Uh, Bitcoin's market cap is 550 billion. Uh, Ethereum's 190 billion. So, um, you know, Bitcoin dominance right now is like 52%. So it's, you know, it's been going up, or I guess it's 51% today. Um, but, you know, we've been kind of hovering in that like just above 50% range. Um, so, you know, their, their report is actually saying that, so a trillion will get added to crypto's market cap and five and and they're saying that bitcoin they believe will hit a 900 billion dollar market cap so that's essentially only 400 billion that's going to bitcoin so they're actually saying that more market cap is going to get added to the entire crypto space uh than just you know what's getting added to bitcoin so they're thinking that altcoins are going to go up a pretty good amount as well which i think if you consider previous bull runs that's probably pretty accurate you see a lot of the initial funds flow into Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you know, three X's in price, and then it drags all the altcoins like uh, uh, up with it. And some of them will will 10 X or more. Um, so that's typically how the market cycle goes, in my opinion. So I, I'm pretty, you know, I, I read through this report. I, I'm pretty much in line with what they're saying for the most part. I actually think it's going to increase a lot more than a trillion dollars in terms of market cap. I'd, I would predict that within like maybe 
six months of the ETF approvals, I think we're going to see it. Uh, the crypto total market cap hit three trillion. So we'll see what happens. But that's just my my little prediction. Um, so, you know, in line with the ETFs, uh, Fidelity just filed an amendment to their uh, spot ETF application. Um, so this is the same amendment, essentially, that um, ARK Invest and Investco did. Uh, so uh, this article says it's likely a sign of ongoing discussions uh, between prospective ETF providers and the SEC. Uh, some firms expect the approval when it when it occurs to add at least one trillion dollars to overall market cap, which is currently at one trillion in coming months. So, uh, you know, that's obviously referring to that same crypto quant report. Um, so Will Clemente actually came out with this interesting information about um, stable coins. So um, the you know, the, the retweet he did was to expand on this point, I think in the next three to five years, Bitcoin slash crypto will become large enough slash integrated enough into the traditional financial system that its failure become systematic to the global financial system broadly. So, you know, I, I agree with that for sure. I think as, you know, as TradFi, like BlackRock, Fidelity, and others start to wade into the crypto industry, it's going to start to get inextricably, that's a hard word, uh, linked with the um, with the TradFi markets. And as that happens, you know, you see the, the way the government steps in and they don't let things fail when they're too big. Uh, so essentially, when does crypto become too big to fail? Uh, and at $120 billion in total market cap today, stablecoins are currently the 16th largest sovereign holder of U.S. treasuries. So, and, and this is wild considering the current state of the crypto market, which is, uh, you know, pretty much the worst crypto winter that we've ever had. So if stablecoins continue to grow, they're going to become way too big uh, to fail because, um, you know, when they're, they become the largest holder of U.S. treasuries, um, you know, the, the government obviously would step in and, and, you know, play their hand in the markets the way they do with, with TradFi right now. So just kind of an interesting future prediction, you know, kind of a futuristic uh, outlook if you, uh, if you consider that the growth of crypto and the linking of it with TradFi could ultimately lead to that kind of too big to fail type of situation. Uh, what isn't too big to fail is Reddit's uh, cryptocurrency. So uh, Reddit launched a cryptocurrency called Moon. It was trading at like 25 cents uh, for a while. Um, and then they, you know, announced that they're winding down the uh, the token and uh, they're basically, you know, getting rid of it. So uh, they basically rugged Moon holders. And some people are saying that there's a lot of executives and community uh, main, you know, big people in the community that uh, sold out of Moon before the news. So obviously kind of looking like a rug. Um, but some people in the Reddit community said that they're going to try to take it and run with it. Uh, Reddit said, you know, they, they had a bunch of different points of why they're winding down, but their main kind of premise was that there was no product market fit and it didn't seem like there was a logical business model behind it. So they decided to wind it down. Obviously, when you do something like that with a crypto, it's, you know, it hurts a lot of people. So, um, well, I guess we'll see what develops from this. Reddit has had some really bad run-ins with their uh, platform and their community lately. So we've seen, you know, issues with the APIs and stuff like that. So I think Reddit has been probably headed in the wrong direction and and uh, maybe making way for for some sort of platform, whoever it is, to come out and and try to take their uh, market share. Uh, Jack Dorsey's company called Block uh, announced its first prototype of a Bitcoin uh, ASIC circuit board uh, for Bitcoin miners. So this could be, you know, a next gen miner. Uh, I guess we'll see what their prototype looks like. Uh, it says it'll be officially launched next year. Um, you know, one thing with mining is that you always have to be kind of on the outlook of, of what the next technology is going to be. Uh, miners are always kind of, you know, mining is a competitive game. You know, it's a zero sum game. So if you mine extra Bitcoin, it means that someone else is mining less. Um, and it's, you know, competitive based on uh, compute power. So, um, you know, obviously, anytime there's a new, you know, ASIC miner that comes out, uh, it's, it's something to keep an eye on uh, if you're mining Bitcoin, at least. Um, GBTC, which is Grayscale's uh, Bitcoin trust, the discount is now at 13.11%. Uh, so obviously that means it's trading, you know, it's trading 13.11% less than the actual value of what GBTC holds in their Bitcoin reserves. Uh, and this discount is actually the closest to the net asset value since December 2021. So uh, that, that gap has been closing and it started closing a lot uh, very quickly. Um, ever since the announcement of, you know, GPTC uh, winning in court against the SEC to, to convert into an actual ETF. So 
this is definitely going to be something to follow. I know a lot of people who have uh, bought into GBTC, not only as a bet on Bitcoin, but as a bet that the uh, the discount will eventually uh, go away. So, you know, in, in the bull market, we see the discount turn into a premium on GBTC. So, you know, we've been at this like really steep discount uh, in the bear market. And if this ETF goes through, if they convert to an ETF, it's literally going to go one to one, like on the same day. Um, so that'll be interesting to watch. Uh, and obviously for anyone buying GPTC, it would be super bullish. Um, I just threw in a little SBF trial news in here, but it was actually really quiet this week on the trial. You know, there was a lot last week with uh, Caroline Ellison, but uh, this week they had um, Nishad Singh take the stand and he basically... Uh, admitted to some hazy memories. So he's kind of, you know, playing, I think he's kind of playing ignorant. Um, so just kind of an interesting stance. And, and, you know, I read a little bit of his testimony and it was, you know, kind of just, kind of just wasting time. So some people are saying that uh, this was like a small win for the SBF uh, defense team. So, uh, you know, take it for what it is, but it, it was kind of uninteresting. Uh, and then prosecutors said they expect to call Peter Easton, a financial uh, forensics expert, uh, on Wednesday to discuss financial flows. So that might get interesting. Maybe we'll see more information dug up about, you know, where money was, you know, spent and uh, where it was held and, you know, how it was used ultimately. So uh, I think it'll be interesting to, you know, maybe see some of the, the inside scoop about the financials behind, you know, FTX. And like I said, quiet week for the, for the whole trial, but we'll keep an eye on it. Um, thanks for listening. That's all I got. See you guys tomorrow.